Despite never finishing high school and dropping out of the Army, Snowden had access to some of the country's deepest secrets at the NSA, where he originally worked as a security guard before moving to the CIA and a series of career moves that would land him diplomatic cover and a high security clearance. While we wait for state, we want to bring in our own Chris Steyerwalt, Fox News digital politics editor and host of Power Play on foxnews.com. And Chris, now many are starting to ask the question, whatever you think of Edward Snowden, how is it that we are granting the kind of access we apparently granted this man uh, to people with that resume and that background? And now we learn he'd only been at Booz Allen, the government contracting firm uh, from which he orchestrated these leaks, for three months. So he's there for three months and he's got enough access to, to get this kind of information. How does it happen? Yeah, you know, Jack Bauer, he ain't. And the uh, the situation, you know, I was talking to a guy who was former high up at the NSA. I said, how did it come to pass that we are farming out functions that relate to the vital information about all of America, every our entire digital presence to contracting firms? Why aren't, why, why isn't this in the hands of government employees? You know, people who can get shot if they if they're doing the wrong things why is this in the hands of a contractor and you know basically the shorthand for the answer was well it's cheaper uh, and you can fire a contractor you can't fire these people but I think as as the picture grows about mr. Snowden the information he had access to and the vastness of this organization the fact that this was being conducted in secret uh, and the fact that we knew so little about it becomes more and more alarming Listen, all right, so he's 29. He never graduated from high school. I think he got his GED. Um, he did some time at community college. He does three months at Booz Allen after a stint at the CIA, a security guard stint at the NSA. He's three months into his tenure at Booz Allen, this government contracting firm. And listen to what he told Glenn Greenwald he had access to. Anybody in the positions of access with the te technical uh, capabilities that I had could, you know, suck out secrets, pass them on the open market to Russia. You know, they always have an open door, as we do. Um, I had access to, you know, the, the full rosters of everyone working at the NSA, the entire intelligence community, uh, and undercover assets all around the world, uh, the locations of every station uh, we have, what their missions are, and so forth. If that's true, we're in a lot of trouble. Well, not only are we in a lot of trouble, but how likely, you know, I had a discussion with our friend Britt Hume today, and, uh, you know, I, taking the, the view of humanity that I do, uh, think that it is unlikely that this was the first abuse that has occurred, and Mr. Snowden referred to it there. You know, Britt said that he has more confidence than I do or was expressing uh, in the ability to control leaks and control abuses. But the, his very presence, the very existence of Mr. Snowden and his ability to rip off all this information and make it not just to anywhere, but to the People's Republic of China, my goodness. Right. You wonder, you wonder what is possible, what in the world is possible. That's the irony of, uh, you know, he, he, he wanted to turn in this information on the United States, you know, saying this isn't the country in which he wants to live if it's like this. You know, I mean, he wanted to improve right. the country. So where does he flee? China? Well, really? <laughs> right. I mean, Hong Kong, you know, it's, it's not quite as bad, but still, I mean, you're, you're in the same neighborhood. You got the same sort of leadership. <laughs> when you're waiting for the Politburo to decide what your fate will be, those are not exactly the most heartwarming words in history. Now, of course, at the same time, there's something rational in it, because who wants U.S. secrets more than anyone else? China. So perhaps uh, he figures that he would be better protected uh, by the communist regime there than he would someplace else. But whatever the case, you know, I guess we should count ourselves lucky that when uh, something like this happened, it's somebody who styles himself a whistleblower, not somebody, as he said, who wants to go sell it to the Russians. Well, the other thing is he's a young guy. He's 29 years old. Yeah. He's got, I mean, it's a, it's a great deal if you can get it, I guess. He's 29. He's got a sick pad <laughs> in Hawaii. He's making, now the number's been revised downward at $122,000 a year. Okay. Still, it's a good chunk of change. Uh, he's got this beautiful girlfriend, and he, and he, you know, now it's all gone because he's decided to, you know, leak, be a whistleblower, however you want to phrase it. The question is, though, Chris, in modern-day America, in cyber warfare and the way things work in the world right now with respect to the Internet and computers, a lot of these whiz kids are young. 
they're young yeah. and they're being recruited to help our spy agencies because you know the old guys they may not know as much as the young guys when it comes to it's it's just like our kids are going to be able to you know outcompute us by the time they're you know 10 <laughs> so that arthur's wily it's you true. know is anybody going to have this perfect polished resume and what no. are our security agencies likely to do in the wake of edward snowden you know what the best thing about edward snowden for the nsa was cheap he was cheap to get because the $122,000, uh, he of the uh, girlfriend, the self-described ballerina with a penchant for pole dancing, it seems, uh, that uh, whatever lifestyle, whatever lavish lifestyle he seemed to be living, he's cheap at the price compared to having somebody who is a lifelong, somebody that you sign up and have to pay a pension because he is a career officer. So he was cheap. This is a symptom of being done on the cheap. This is a symptom of a giant system that is based on lobbying, government contractors, and all this stuff. The problem is now we know that it's our stuff that they're sifting through. Yeah, uh, the pension for pole dancing. And that's, so. that's the thing is we, we saw her, we thought she was a ballerina because we saw a little tutu, and then we read further mm. and realized she's using that term very loosely. Loosely, Very yes. loosely. It's, compli it's complicated. <laughs> right. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, a photograph published in The Guardian's article about Edward Snowden is sparking a lot of attention online about the kinds of groups he supported. In the picture, Snowden is seen with his laptop, which is sporting stickers showing support for two online privacy groups. The first one, called the Electronic Frontier Foundation, is a longstanding civil liberties group that advocates for digital privacy. The second one, called the Tor Project, is in the business of helping people bypass internet controls so that they're able to send and receive digital information anonymously. Both groups say they've never worked with or had any contact with Snowden. So what exactly was going on with this man? Were there any signs or clues that he was about to do what he did? And what do his actions reveal about his true motivations? Criminal profilers have been studying this man's interview uh, and his behavior since the leak. And wait until you hear, hear the theories on him. One of them joins us live.